a couple of weeks ago, we did a video where we actually found this picture submitted to me on the web. But is the new explanation really an excuse, an alibi, or is it a manure salesman with a mouthful of samples? We'll check that out next, right here on Deep Dive. So let's do a little recap here. On February 5th of this year, I was sent this picture by Steve Gawthorn, who stated, do not share this on Facebook. It had too many pics have been stolen, despite it actually being on the Searching for Bigfoot website since October of 2022. Says it was taken in Kern County, California, February 12th, 2022. Said, you're right, the picture was transferred to a computer because he had taken offense to my claim that this was a screen cap. And first he says, the pic came from a phone I had, but I don't have it now. Long story short, I was randomly taking pictures with my phone, yada, yada, yada. And then he left it on his uh, roof, on his Jeep, and then he drove off. 20 minutes later, I'm looking for my phone, and it just happened to stay on his roof for the entire 20 minutes. Uh, so when he came to a stop, it slid off the roof and it shattered. But he still has a phone, but he just said he didn't have the phone. So I'm not quite sure what it is there. But you can understand why we knew this was quickly becoming a fake. Not only does the story sound strange, but that little bar on the bottom indicating it was off of a video. And, you know, this is just semantics. First, he says he doesn't have the phone, but he does have the phone. Not quite sure. So after cutting the video and releasing it here on YouTube, we had gotten a message from Mr. Cawthorn. And Mr. Cawthorn started by calling me all sorts of names, yada, yada, yada. Eventually, the discussion basically said, I'll explain to you over the phone, not on here. I'm going to do a podcast about it. It's not going to be good, at least not on my part. Give me your number. So finally, he found my phone number and he tried calling me, but I would not answer it. So then he decides to threaten to dox me. I had to dig it for dig for it, but I found it. Should I give your number for everyone to see? It's your call. Well, I preempted that by saying, well, anybody can have my phone number. Here it is. But doxing is not a good thing. And then I wrote the sad thing. I was about to call you back. And he goes, read your text responding I just called your phone again no answer I keep getting voicemail so at that point I said you know what you can text me at this point I'm keeping this on the record so he continued to text me so the new story is now the same as the old one except that Jan Allen his deceased co-host of his podcast had sent him this picture months earlier and somehow it made its way into his saved photos gallery, probably in between all those photos he allegedly took of that day. However, we never see those photos. So he sends me a screen cap of what appears to be a Google Voice chat in the vertical position as opposed to the horizontal position, trying to emulate a phone screen grab and says, here it is. Conveniently, the photo he sent missed the information about who is sending what data. So as far as I know, this could have been sent to Jan Allen from Cawthron. Hard to uh, understand it, hard to see it. But there's a few other things that make this vertical picture look a little bit interesting. Not only is the essential data missing from who sent the picture to whom, but this picture does not come off a phone. It comes actually off a computer screen. As you can see, the picture on the left is what he sent me, but the picture on the right is a Google Voice chat I tested. So when I asked him to retest or retake the picture, he turned around and gave the excuse that his phone just died. And I sent that picture to myself on my Google Voice chat. And that's a picture of him showing the phone just died. Well, it didn't come off the phone to begin with. We know that. So eventually he sends me a second picture about an hour later. And guess what? Let's compare it to the first try. All of a sudden, magically, because I say there's no information on that right side of the screen, now all of a sudden the information is on the bottom left-hand corner. Wasn't in the original, and if you notice, the edges look a little different than the first picture. It looks square, whereas the right-hand side is rounded. 
well, that just doesn't work. That, to me, looks like photo manipulation there, folks, because the Google image, the image that's in the chat box, should be completely rounded, all four corners. But here it's not. Why is that? So again, we go back to our test picture we have over on Google Voice, and this time I called it up on the computer because it's very clear that's the pictures he's been sending me have been from the computer, even though the first time he tried to say it was from a phone, it was not. But as you can see, where the icon goes, the actual sender icon goes, is a little more off to the lower left-hand side. It's a little further up, whereas on his picture, it's beneath the picture. Again, suggesting photo manipulation. And uh, it may be just a setting, but... For some reason, the timestamp is on the end of the message, whereas here it's missing. So I'm not sure if that's a setting or not, but just a a brief note. And again, the edges, again, as you can see on the test picture, all four corners are rounded, not squared, like the left-hand side of his picture. So clearly, this is a photo manipulation, trying to put the data on there and trying to put the blame on somebody that's deceased. So finally, we come to the excuse of him not knowing Jan was dead till... July or August of this year. I know he said last year, but I think he meant this year. Uh, Because he clearly says uh, he tried calling him and he wouldn't get back to me. So I had no clue what was going on. I didn't get news about his death until almost the middle of, I think, July or August. But just sent to me three days after his passing. He sent me a text, a message, a good friend of mine, one of my long good time friends. He was an avid Bigfoot researcher for over 50 years, Mr. Chan Allen of the GBRO. And this was sent three days after his death. So how did he not know he died when he was sending messages and doing a tribute show to boot? As he posted here, he posts a tribute uh, announcement about the show he was doing for Jan Allen just uh, a week and a half after his passing. So his excuse, he was trying to get a hold of Jan and he didn't know about Jan's death, that too was a lie. So on the last picture he sent me was a very clear text above it. Hey, jury rig with a V, jury rig, or what I believe he meant to say was jerry rig. Now looking at the way Catherine spells, we can tell he's not really the the best speller in the world. So jury probably meant jerry rig, uh, which means to fix up, make up, that kind of light. Right after that, the word V, does that actually mean that he said hey jury rig video and of course underneath it there's an a and we know he uses the alias thanks to his latest antics andrew cawthron so could that actually be his message to jan hey jury rig video and here is the picture so i don't know it's a very interesting uh, sublimation there but nothing i can prove but there's an interesting hypothesis So, folks, do I think Cawthron was telling me the truth when this picture was sent to him by Jan Allen? Absolutely not. I believe he put this out there with the story that he took this picture just kind of by accident. And we're supposed to believe that now the camera took a picture by itself. It survived this. And we have a whole cacophony of lies here and manipulations and claims that we've proven are lies. So, from that point going forward, we can't trust a thing this guy says, regardless of what podcast he's on or what he says is the excuse as to why this ended up on the Biscardi website, which, by the way, it's still there, and that's Biscardi's mantra when you're out there abetting a hoax. It's the job of yourself to, when caught red-handed with your pants down, you know, to say, hey, I, this wasn't me, I was hoaxed, and that's exactly what Cawthorn's trying to do here, except he's not very good at it, as you can see. So until next time, folks, we appreciate you watching this content. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see here, and consider joining our membership. We'll catch you all here next time on Deep Dive, and we'll catch you live Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on Squatch TV. 